Pleasant good evening and welcome to SAT TV's Channel 9 Evening News. I am your presenter, Larry Larock. Thank you for joining us. Among the major developments, Health Minister says you've smoking too much. Former Grenada Senator still waiting on new job offer. China jail smoker Lai Sangqing for life. RC Doctor football team secures victory. Details of these and other stories after the break. Thank you for staying with us. Now for the details of the news. For form students Marissa Norris and Samara Burson representing Orion Academy and in fact the Commonwealth of Dominica in an international effort to highlight the thoughts of children worldwide on the issue of peace. The International Peace Quilt was conceptualized as a celebration of the London Olympics 2012. It aims to stitch together into one tapestry the thoughts and pictorial illustrations on peace by the children from every country of the globe. I'm Samara Burton, I'm 14 years old. I'm Marissa, I'm 15 years old. Okay, and the program is uh, International Peace Quilt. So what it is is that they asked for students in schools all around the globe, in almost every country on the globe, to do a painting that represented peace and unity internationally. And we did it for Dominica. Hey. Each drawing was to include the completed sentence, we all wish for peace because... Well, at first we had like two different ideas. For me, I choose to do hands because I really want to do hands, and then and then I had this idea of globe, the globe, and since it's international, and I wanted to incorporate Dominica, which is an island, and so I kind of just started to draw it, and then we said, well, what if we put it together? And then we did. The students chose to complete the sentence with as follows: We all wish for peace because harmony is not beyond our reach. Marisa and Samara have indeed represented Dominica well and are great Orion ambassadors. Um, they each, each person was, they gave us a sentence that said we all wish for peace because and we were supposed to finish the sentence and we actually had a little trouble with that but then after Marissa came up with the idea to say harmony is not beyond our reach because we had the hands. So, yes. Principal Mrs. Ann Burton explained the Orion's view on the subject of world peace is beautifully captured by the colorful nationalistic images that the students wove together. Their drawing depicts the island of Dominica on the globe in all its mountainous majesty with the childlike figures representing our Kalinago and predominantly Negro populations standing close to our coastline. We, we were extremely excited at the prospect of being able to take part in this project and um, Marissa and Samara are both art students doing CXE and um, we asked them to do it and they didn't hesitate, they were very eager to, to jump in. As I said, they spent their whole Easter summer, Easter vacation, um, working on it and um, every draft they did just got better and better and um, in the final analysis with all the concepts that they came together we could only be extremely proud of what they have done. We now go to Desin Josie for a report on the Pond Kase Road Project protest. 
Workers from the Ponkase to Menvinol Road project have appeared to be on strike. Treasurer of the Truckers Association, Mr. Arthur Schillingfer, says the workers have not received any wages from the month of February until now. Mr. Schillingfer stated that this situation is beyond difficult and frustrating, seeing that the workers do not have enough money to sustain. Members has been written from the banks that is owing for their house and also owing for the equipment. And we had a meeting about four plus months ago together with the representative of the government, together with the Minister of Public Works, to make sure that Gada can pay us our money. And we have not been any fruit from that since. He says from what he understands, a meeting was held with the minister as well as the representative of Gadakan and as a result, the government is not able to pay the workers. The government representative of the minister denied that they were owing Gadakan any money. And every time we speak to the representative of Gadakan, they're saying they cannot pay us is because Mr. Gadakan, Mr. the government of Dominica has not paid them. We would be very happy if the government or the representative of the government would make a statement to clear the air, let the public know, because we cannot continue on the same footing. We had a meeting with Mr. Gadakan over three weeks ago. He promised that he would pay us some money. Mr. Schillingford mentioned that he has been calling the representative of Gadakan, yet the situation remains the same. He added that the representative stated that he has not received any money from the government and this is having a huge effect on the workers and their performance. Saying that we are not controlling the road project itself, we are controlling our trucks. What we are saying is we are not able to continue because we have high fuel bill, tires, and the people, some of the people that we are owing is the only good thing Gadakan is owing them themselves. So they understand we have not got any money because they themselves have not received money. That's the only good thing we have for us. Mr. Schillingford believes that the workers should, not, should work together to get a better result. He says they all work as a team and when the executive manager is not pleased, the rest follows. We have an organization, if, one, if, 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 if the executive say sit, we all sit. If they say run, we all run and that's how we operate. Mr. Schillingford says he wants to continue to work and he needs the money owed to him. Thank you, Ms. Josie, for that report. Health Minister Honorable Julius Timoff is urging Dominicans to stop smoking as it is causing a lot of health problems. I want the population of Dominica to be very clear on this thing, that marijuana is not a substitute for tobacco. Because there, that seems to be a, a, a concept these days. And the marijuana is as bad or worse than the tobacco. Because it is smoking. Once you ingest it, once the thing it goes into your lungs, the effect is more or less the same. Mr. Timothy also pointed out that the frequency of smoking in youth is very alarming, which something needs to be done to address this issue. You know, our statistics on marijuana in Dominica are not very good at all, although the drug is illegal. But we seem, right, recently they, they conducted a, a, a study which showed that Dominica, in terms of the youth and tobacco use, we were probably the lowest in the Caribbean. But in terms of the youth and marijuana use, we were the highest in the Caribbean. <coughs> Could you believe that? How, how soon was that? That, was, that survey was conducted in 2011, just last year, late last year. That Dominica youth smoke more marijuana per capita than anywhere else in the Caribbean. This is totally unacceptable. Mr. Timothy said that it is very important that the public does not use marijuana as an alternative to tobacco as marijuana smokers live shorter lives and this is not something that we need in Dominica. He also highlighted a preliminary research which is being conducted in Jamaica on Rastafarians who say marijuana is their herb, but it is the same herb that is the reason they are not living long. Mr. Timothy also added that in the government's effort to reduce in smoking, a tobacco-free draft legislation has been prepared and is being fine-tuned to then hand over to the Legal Affairs Department and finally to Cabinet for approval. 
He went on to say that the government is very much committed to having the smoking of tobacco eliminated in public places. However, patrons had mixed feelings on the issue of marijuana and tobacco smoking. One patron who chose to remain anonymous said that the youth of today are smoking marijuana as a habit which is creating a negative image about it than ever before. Well, uh, generations used to smoke marijuana in a way like a, like a meditation vibe, but right now they have it like a habit, like a, like a style, you know, and that's not good for health on a whole. Because what that does do, that damaging your brain cells, that making you forget a lot, you know. So from how i looking at it, the youth, they're not supposed to smoke marijuana in that kind of context. The patron also added that the excuse used by the youth, saying that they smoke when they are stressed to free up their mind, is unacceptable and it is just to justify the abuse of the illegal drug. The youth now, they have it like a style. They have it like a... Like they stand up by the road there, they want to smoke a spliff, they smoke a spliff and they smoke another one after and it's another one and it's another one and it's another one. That's not good for the health, you know? Marijuana, from what I know, is like something for you to have like a, like a meditation, you know? It has certain people that using it before they go to work in the morning to help them through their day, but I myself, I don't see where it's going with that. Another patron who had no problem with the smoking of marijuana says that in his travels to many Caribbean countries, he noticed that many more young people were smoking marijuana than that in Dominica. He also added that when you have lack of employment and lack of finance, more people will smoke to get their mind of the stresses of life and bad situations. Since I know myself growing up, I know my mother, I know my father, I know how much people in marijuana and the older than me smoking. And when it's tobacco, they write it on the box for you. Tobacco kills, smoke at your own risk, you know? But it don't have that in weed. Weed come from the soil, weed come from the earth, you know? That is from Ja, that not thing from man and factory made and process. That is seed that grow. Anywhere you put a seed that must grow, that not a thing man come and design or thing. That is a thing that in man's system from long, long time man smoking within a two day. And if it's youth, they want to say, like, oh, are you smoking more than 20 years? I doubt. Another patron who says that marijuana is not being used as a gateway drug, but it is being used as an escape for some of the social pressures and social circumstances. Now, it is easy for us to, of course, make assumptions and state that, you know, marijuana usage, you know, causes a lot of health um, how do you say, effects. However, you know, I have yet to see some form of factual evidence, you know, some report that you know can specifically pinpoint you know the usage of marijuana compared to the other drugs such as alcohol tobacco and which one is actually worse because based on ethical values we'll always you know look at um, alcohol and say that you know it's socially accepted so it doesn't really cause any effect however when you compare it to marijuana which has always have a always had a, a negative stigma to it it's easy for us to make assumptions and say you know what the kids should stop smoking marijuana or there's a high usage of marijuana which causes health concerns but yet there when can we get to the real facts what are the things is, uh, which are actually positively affecting the youths compared to the things that are in society right now including um cigarettes which specifically says on the box smoking kills yet we continue to use it the gentleman went on to say that everyone uses marijuana for different reasons as he used it during his school days to relax his mind when stuttering. The Beacon Insurance Company Limited, a little insurance company in Dominica, held a special ceremony on Thursday, May 17th for the launch of its rebranding at the Fort Young Hotel. Managing Director of the Beacon Insurance Company Limited, Mr. Ivo Nassif says, since Archipelago became the sole agent for Beacon in 1996, the company has grown steadily to become one of the preferred insurance providers in Dominica and by extension the region. Mr. Nassif added that Beacon provides insurance coverage for motor vehicles, property, marine and cargo, general accident, liability, group health and life amongst others. Beacon's commitment to Dominica was highlighted in 2004 after the island was affected by the earthquake of November 21st, 2004. All policyholders were adequately compensated and claims processed in a timely manner to ensure minimum discomfort to all our customers. In the last five years, Beacon has paid out eight and a half million dollars in claims. I can say without hesitation that we, Archipelago, have been satisfied and proud with how Beacon has met its obligation to policyholders 
and we consider it a privilege to be the representative in Dominico. The Beacon Insurance Company Limited, under the rebranding, will now be simply known as Beacon, as pointed out by Mr. Nassif. He went on to say that insurance is a promise to pay and at Beacon they keep their promises. Director and Senior Operations Executive of Beacon, Mr. Christian Hadid, pointed out that his grandfather founded the Beacon Insurance Company Limited in 1970 in Trinidad. He added that at the time the company's assets were 500,000 TT dollars and the premium income after the first year of doing business was just $300,000. Mr. Hadid says that his grandfather's main objective of the company was to build a brand with a reputation for sound underwriting and excellent service. By the end of its first 10 years of operation, Caribbean Insurance's assets had more than quadrupled and premium income had exploded to over 20 million TT dollars. This exponential growth was testimony to the wisdom of the founder to pursue a strategy founded on service. 25 years later, after Caribbean Insurance came into being, it gave birth to Beacon Insurance Company Limited in 1996. Mr. Hadid added that under the new name, company logo and corporate copy line, the company will continue to provide the ever-growing professional service and also expeditious and mutually satisfactory settlement of claims. He added that at Beacon, they do not feel satisfied unless their customers are all satisfied. Sixteen years have elapsed and my father, Mr. Gerald Hadid, has led the Beacon since that day. And I am proud to report that the company's assets are now in excess of 370 million TT dollars with premium income that is over 200, 280 million TT dollars. Since 1970, we have been steadily expanding our reach into the Caribbean with branches or agencies in Barbados, Grenada, St. Vincent, Dominica, and St. Kitts and Nevis. He went on to say that their technology platform plays a significant role since it is viewed as a key enabler to enhance productivity and effectiveness. With this, they embarked on a modernizing their policy administration with a new system that incorporates workflow and document management. We can always complete visibility and control of how documents and work progress through the organization, whether the employee sits in Dominica or in Trinidad. <clears throat> Indeed, this new platform has given us the ability to implement very progressive HR methodologies such as work from home arrangements without impairing productivity. While all of this was going on internally, we recognized that we had to redefine our brand expression so that our visual identity remained in sync with the progress and changes we had made over the years. Mr. Adid says their new logo represents this transition as the lighthouse and the guidance it provides has been maintained, but the company image, like the company, has evolved to create a stronger and more modern representation of the company's promise. Bigland Insurance Company Limited began operations in Dominica on July 1, 1996 and inherited the core values and goodwill of Caribbean Insurance Company Limited which provided similar services in Dominica in 1994. The ICT for Girls and Women celebrations have tapered to an end with the recognition of International Telecommunication and Information Security Day on May 17th. Organizers coordinated activities dubbed it a success as it highlighted established female IT personalities in Dominica while seeing an increase in the interest of ICT shown in girls. IT coordinator Mr. Abraham Durand noted that the Ministry of Information, Telecommunication and Constituency Empowerment collaborated with the National Women's Council to serve the dual purpose of ITC exposure as well as supporting the cause of promoting independent women. There was a lot of, of breaking down of the walls and the mystery surrounding ICT and we anticipate that the general public benefited from those discussions and that we will see a, 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 a general reframing, restructuring of the way ICT is per, per 
is perceived by women, as well as more women are taking up the challenge, especially towards using ICT in improving their lives, in improving their, 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 their standing in society, and definitely addressing some of the issues facing women in the society. The activities included celebrations in the school as well as a panel discussion that featured solely women in the ICT field. ICT as an economic sector in Dominica is still in its infancy stage but is becoming rapidly pervasive in society. Therefore, with the culmination of these activities, the Ministry of Information, Telecommunication and Constituency Empowerment moves closer to promoting ICT as an everyday aspect of Dominican life. We are very much ahead in terms of the, 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 the legal framework for ICT. We have made a lot of inroads into developing policy and a national strategic plan for the, for the, de the deployment of ICT and the development of the sector. I believe that we are, we are very much ready. There is a lot more education to be done and we need to also coordinate or the, the education that we deliver, especially to our young students, towards the, the, the ultimate needs of the society, especially the economic needs that will in fact generate uh, the, an, an, economic IC, an economically viable ICT sector. The ICT girls' activity is followed of the ICT roadshow with a pause for a few months. Director of Telecommunications Mr. Sylvester Cadet says that this will not be the last to be seen of the ICT promotion as the Ministry is already planning their next moves. Quite clearly we see that uh, in terms of career development one of the fundamentals is to really create and stimulate a new kind of uh, a new kind of confidence, a new kind of basic understanding as to what ICTs truly mean, not merely from uh, the technical and engineering standpoint, but what it means in terms of ultimate career development, what it means in terms of efficiency, effectiveness, productivity, what it means in terms of being able to reap the kind of entrepreneurial and um, other uh, economic benefits that could be derived from ICTs. Uh, so in that regard, we see a need for greater capacity building. The National Drug Abuse Prevention Unit is gearing towards extending its anti-drug education program in schools to involve preschoolers. A manual is currently being edited for the preschool and kindergarten teachers to enable them to teach the drug education at an age-appropriate level. We believe in early intervention. Sometimes we wait too late to talk to kids about drugs. Um, although they are at a tender age, but there are things that you could teach them about good and bad drugs, good and bad medicine, and sometimes you have to work from the experience. There are things that they know, and maybe they have the wrong information, you'll be able to correct them. So we believe that if we can start early to introduce, you know, the basic concept, and as they grow older, you know, they will develop upon it, and so by the time they reach the age where um, they'll be able to use their refusal skill to say no to drug. But it's a work in progress, and I'm um, eagerly, you know, looking for um, the day when we we'll present, you know, the manual to the schools. A number of workshops were held in 2010 during which preschool and kindergarten teachers met to develop lesson plans for the manual. It is the goal of the unit to have the manual published so that teachers could integrate it in the lesson plans in September, beginning to teach the vital topic. In addition, the Drug Abuse Prevention Unit is preparing for the 31st of May, which will be recognized as World No Tobacco Day, and June 26, which is observed as a National Day Against Drug and Illicit Trafficking. During that period, the unit will collaborate with the Health Promotion Unit to visit secondary school and address the students in first and third form on the issue of smoking. Currently, we would like to do another area of um, awareness building within the schools. So we have designed uh, a message that the schools could put on their, uh, maybe on the door or an area in the school where the children frequent. And the message probably would read something like, my community, my school, my choice, no drugs. Um, so each school will be presented with a plaque. So um, we're working with the sign man to produce you know, that um, information for us 
which we will hand over to the Ministry of Education for onward submission to all the schools, particularly the primary schools and the secondary schools. The National Drug Abuse Prevention Unit is not only working with children, but also with the Dominica Prevent Services, providing at least 25 young men with anti-drug training. Ms. Bayanis highlights the need for communities to get involved in the anti-drug campaign in the country. My major concern basically is that the drug problem should not be a problem of the government or the National Drug Prevention Unit, but it should be a problem for everyone in the society because it affects us both directly and indirectly. And I'm hoping that communities can begin to take action to help to minimize you know, the drug problem in the, in the society. The sports division is hosting their second health work on Saturday, May 19th, which will commence at 8 a.m. The walk will start from the live junction where everyone is expected to gather. At 8 o'clock from the junction of the of Layu, coming from the Great Blue Bridge, the Layu Junction, and we walk all the way through the base road into Salt Bridge. Everyone is expected to join us. We are calling on anyone interested to join us. Join the sports division as we walk for health, as we walk for life. Be a part of it. Increase your lifespan on the earth. Sports officer Mr. Godwin Dosset says the sports division is targeting residents from La Yuan St. Joseph. However, the public is invited. Mr. Dossett says the people will meet at Layu and will power walk to Salisbury. He added citizens from diverse groups participated in the first health walk and others who came to the support the walk were foreigners, young athletes and middle-aged couples. Mr. Dossett says the sports division expects the same turnout. Dominica, we see the need to motivate our population into performing physical exercises which is important for the for maintaining us on the health. And that's, that's, that's the initiative of the sports division to do, put on a show in different villages of or different communities of Dominica that we encourage people to go out and walk. In addition, he believes the aim of the health works is to bring awareness to the overweight and unhealthy people. Mr. Dossett states that it is very important to keep fit and healthy as much as possible. He explains why it is important for Dominicans to keep healthy and how it contributes to our health. The sports division will be holding the second health walk on Saturday, the 19th of May. The health walk will take place in the area of Layu, through to Salisbury. So we are asking the general public to come out and work for their health, work for their life. As, um, as the non-communicable diseases continues to increase. Mr. Dossett went on to say that the health work will be held every month for the year and will take place in each district in order to maintain its purpose. The Dominica Cancer Society will be holding a candlelight procession on Saturday, May 19th from 6 p.m. at the People's Park in Roseau. The procession will proceed from the park along the bayfront and then through the Roseau Market across to the new bridge onto Portersville. Participants will congregate at the building of the New Day Fellowship and the Deliverance Ministries on Elliott Avenue to await the arrival of the President. His Excellency Nicholas J. O. Liverpool and Mrs. Liverpool will arrive at 6.45 p.m. by which all must be seated. There will be a prayer and a healing service and an opportunity to remember friends and loved ones who have passed on. The public is hereby invited to turn out in large numbers to support the event. This has been the local segment of the news. Coming up next, regional highlights.